Today's video lecture is going to look into hemostasis and coagulation and the lab procedures we have in place to monitor the hemostatic mechanism. Our goal is to explain the common hemostasis and coagulation tests that we perform in a clinical laboratory. When it comes to hemostasis and coagulation testing, there are three different areas of the hemostatic mechanism that we can examine and monitor with our lab tests. The first would be the condition of the blood vessels, specifically the capillaries. Platelet functioning is number two. And lastly, the coagulation cascade. All three of these things are crucial to the hemostatic mechanism working properly. If we want to stop blood flow, we have to have healthy blood vessels, functioning platelets, and a fully functioning coagulation cascade. So naturally in the lab, if someone's having issues with blood clotting, we're gonna examine all three of these areas using different tests to try and figure out what part isn't working correctly. So let's take a look at the first one. We're gonna look at the condition of the blood vessel tests first, and there's a little bit of overlap between it and platelet function. And the very first test is known as the bleeding time. And it's pretty much just like it sounds, what we're going to be measuring with the bleeding time test are platelet functions and amounts and the condition of our capillaries. What we're physically measuring as we are doing the bleeding time test is how long it takes someone to stop bleeding, literally. How this is performed, and it's not often done anymore, but it can be, is you have a small puncture that is made in the arm with something that looks kind of like those little lancets that we saw in lab for a finger poke, but it has a little blade on it. You can see a little bit right here, and you'll make a small nick into the arm, and if you do it right, that patient will bleed a little bit, and you will allow them to bleed, and every 30 seconds or so, you will blot away the blood that's forming and coagulating, hopefully, at that spot with filter paper and you record how long it takes for you to do this and then how long it takes for them to stop bleeding. Capillary fragility is, again, as it sounds, a test for measuring the capillary's conditions. What we're going to be doing here in this test is actually inducing the formation of something called petechiae. And petechiae, as you can kind of see here, are tiny little ruptures of the capillaries. They form what look like little tiny bruises. And this can happen for a lot of reasons, but in this case, we're actually inducing the formation of these little petechiae. And what happens is, you're going to put a blood pressure cuff on the arm of the patient, and you're gonna fill it to a little bit over 100 millimeters of mercury, so that's a little bit of pressure. You leave it on for five minutes, and then you watch to see if the petechiae form on the forearm of this patient. Now, if the capillaries are excessively fragile, then you will see the formation of these petechiae. And if not, you won't see them. Obviously, if they're more fragile, then you'll have more, and if they're less fragile, you'll have less. So again, sounds kind of rudimentary, but I guess it gets the job done, right? The platelet count is something we talked about in lab, and so I won't be going over it in this video lecture. You can review it in lab and ask questions as you see fit, but it is something we can use to monitor our platelet levels. Platelet aggregation tests obviously are looking at platelet function. One of the things that platelets are supposed to do is clump, and if they don't have the ability to clump, then they're not going to be able to clump together and stop you from bleeding. So what will happen is in this, in this test, we will be inducing the formation of platelet clumps. And so what will happen here, you can kind of see in this, this area, you are going to spin the tube down and you're going to draw out what's known as platelet-rich plasma. So basically that little area between the plasma and the buffy coat where there are platelets, that's what you're going to draw out. And you're gonna take that platelet-rich plasma and you're gonna mix it with something known as an aggregating agent, basically something that's going to cause it to clump. Before you add the aggregating agent, your fluid should be cloudy. It should be turbid because you have a lot of platelets suspended there. When you add the aggregating agent, it should cause the platelets to clump if they're healthy. If they cause clumps, the fluid actually becomes a little bit clearer because you have big, large clumps and lots of clear space in between them. And what we can do then is we can measure the change in turbidity from before the clumping agent was added to after. 
and if the clumps are formed, that means that things are good, and that means the turbidity will actually go down. Another test for platelet function is called clot retraction. Platelets have in them and on them chemicals that can stimulate the formation of a clot. And so what we're doing here when we're doing a clot retraction test is we are measuring the quality of clot formation as induced by the platelets being present. So what happens is you will take about roughly two milliliters of whole blood. This has not been anticoagulated, so this would be like a red top tube and then you just take off two mils of it. You incubate it at body temperature and you check it at two and 24 hours. The platelets should have induced the clot within two hours. And if they haven't, that's a sign that there's a problem. Also, within 24 hours, there should still be a clot present. If there isn't, that, in that indicates that potentially you have an issue with your fibrinolytic system. Perhaps clot breakdown is happening too rapidly and there might be something wrong there. So it's an important test and it's very simple and we're just looking for how blood clots on its own with no external stimulus but just using those platelets as the factors that induce it. And you'll see the reason they call it clot retraction is because as you can see the blood is going to form this clot and it almost looks like the red cells because they get caught up in the clot have pulled away from the sides. A nice clot retraction test will, have, will leave behind a lot of clear serum and one big clump. This one shows there's been some hemolysis and also that the clumping hasn't been very efficient so the clot formation wasn't very good and there could be a number of reasons that caused that but it might be due to the platelets. So all of those exams that we've just looked at are looking specifically at the capillary function or the platelet function.